everybody, it's Mike Frieder here with On Call Compliance Solutions, and I'm back with another Compliance Tip of the Week. Today we're talking about what's up with all these weird controls in NIST SP800171 requiring you to review and audit logs from the systems that may contain secure information. So, uh, creating uh, and retaining system audit logs. So, uh, control 3.3.1 in NIST SP800171 uh, and, and uh, create and retain system audit logs and records to the extent needed to enable the monitoring analysis, investigation, and reporting of unlawful or unauthorized system activity. So what this is really all about is the concept that if you don't have a system proactively reporting what is going on with your systems at all times, you have no way to really protect yourself. I mean, it's just, you know, look, antivirus, all that other kind of stuff, it's all reactive, all right? You have to have somebody that's proactively looking at everything that's going on uh, in order to really know what is going on. So it's at this exact moment and with the effective call out of this solution that the government's really trying to teach us that reactive solutions like antivirus are just not good enough. An example uh, is that an antivirus is a reactive protection method. So something bad has to go on in order for the heuristics and the, and the antivirus engine to kind of actually go, oh, this is bad, now I should do something. Well, the problem is something bad already happened. So honestly, by that point, it's too late. Bad guys are already in the system executing payloads and likely already got to the CUI and other critical data they want. And well, they're just trying to cover their tracks at that point. So obviously that's not okay. So instead, when we're monitoring the logs for security specific information all the time, <clears throat> we can see what is trying to get in and do bad things by essentially monitoring everything, okay? For instance, no antivirus is going to alert you to a connection to your network from Russia. There is no antivirus in the world that will do that, okay? None that I know of. Uh, but a system monitoring the log file looking for non-malicious foreign IP connections can absolutely do this, right? So again, if we have a SIEM solution or a, uh, you know, a system that's watching all of those event logs and you notice that there's a log on from a foreign country and that's unusual, well, then you can go and investigate it. It may not be something wrong. It may not be malicious, but it certainly should be investigated. And certainly the IT department should know that. A SIEM system can be set up to proactively alert before the bad stuff happens. And it is what is required to actually be monitoring your system in order to detect bad things at the earliest possible moment. The odd or unusual behavior starts to happen on your systems. So I know there's a lot of controls around this idea of creating the audit logs making sure they go to the central place, protecting that central place, actually looking at the alerts that come out of it. Look, if you're going through trying to solve this and you're banging your head against the wall, trying to figure out what these controls are really calling for, here's the answer. You need a SIEM system, right? A security information and event monitoring system, okay? It should either alert via a SOC or a security uh, operation center. So a bunch of nerds in a room and they read through the logs or, you know, have systems that help them read through the logs, and then those people are gonna send security information uh, to you, let you know, hey, there's a problem. They might even take proactive response, that's a SOC, which can be in-house or outsourced, or it should go straight to your IT ticketing system if you have one. So again, there's no SOC that's mandated, but there is a SIEM that's mandated. That's important, important to note. Now, the bottom line is reacting to problems is not okay anymore, all right? Now, maybe if we weren't a defense contractor, maybe if we weren't holding sensitive information, no big deal. Uh, but look, attackers are often in systems stealing information for months before they execute a noticeable payload to cover their tracks, i.e. a virus or ransomware. Only by monitoring everything can you have a chance at recognizing a threat and getting rid of it instead of reacting when it's already way too late. So if you've got questions about SIEM, how it works, et cetera, we're happy to help. We really feel like the point at which an organization brings a SIEM on board is a real maturing point, okay? Uh, that everyone should go through in the cybersecurity and management of their systems, especially if you're a defense contractor, there's no longer a choice. Now, personally, I'll tell you, when we start going into SIEM systems with our clients, it's kind of like a proud dad moment. I said it, it's like a proud dad moment, right? I'm like, boom, I'm watching my little baby IT department grow up and become a real, you know, a real, a real boy or a real girl, you know, who can actually be aware of what's happening in the system. And that's, that's what the government thinks too, right? That's what they want. Uh, they want you to just have a mature system where you know what's going on with your kids. <laughs> All right, hey, if you're trying to get compliant with DFARS, NIST SP-800-171, or CMMC on your own and looking for help, our compliance experts are always on call for you. Don't ask me for parenting advice. Visit NIST-800-171-compliance.com or check out the bio below for links to make life easy. 
There you can find more information about how we can help self-schedule time of your convenience with one of our compliance experts through any form on the website or learn more about our completely done for you services that can have you on your way to being compliant in just two to three days. It is that easy. Listen, if you love the content we're putting out for you, if you're learning something, help us out, baby. Give us a big thumbs up on that like button or even better, smash that subscribe button to get the latest compliance content as soon as our compliance nerds roll it out. It's a great way to stay prepared for that upcoming CMMC certification. Everybody's going to have to go through it eventually anyway. Until the next compliance tip, my friends, stay safe and secure out there and hit us in the comments below to let us know what you'd like to know more about when it comes to information security and compliance. Hey, I'll see you on the next one.